Hey, welcome back to the Witcher Math channel. And uh, we've sure used rectangle models or generic rectangles to solve lots of different types of problems, not just to solve them, but to help you understand what is actually happening. And uh, I've stumbled across another case where this is possible. So, uh, and I also stumbled across a lot of Cinnamon Fire, okay, I know it's blurry. A lot of Cinnamon Fire Jolly Ranchers left in my bowl. Why is that? Are they too hot to handle? People can't handle it? Oh, okay, so here we go. Yeah, we can use rectangle models to solve proportions. This is crazy. So check this out. Let's say we have our simple proportion like this. Okay, now I'm sure you probably have a background and some technique or strategy you use to solve this. But stick with me on this. I want you to understand what's happening, and I want to show you a concrete visual way of doing this. Okay, so what this means is we have something, X, that is split into four pieces. So if I just draw a rectangle, and I call that thing X, this unknown thing. There it is. It's just a thing. Okay? Some unknown number. And we want to figure out what that is that can be split into four equal pieces such that each piece equals three halves. So let's break that down. First of all, we have this unknown thing split into four equal pieces. So let's do that. There's two, there's four. It's split into four equal pieces now. Now the problem says um, each one of these pieces is worth three halves. And let's do a little side trip over here. Three halves really means three of one half or three times one half, or three over one times one half, which gets us back to three halves. It's important to understand what three halves really means, okay? It's three of one half. But anyway, each one of these four equal pieces equals three halves. The reason why that is important is because I have to have three things in there and each thing, each one of those three things is one half, right? So there's one half, one half, one half. The total makes three halves. And we know that this thing X was split into four equal pieces. So therefore, we have this going on. Since all the pieces are equal, we can split all of them into three halves, right? As we just learned three pieces of one half each, okay? And then, if we add all these things up, how many holes, W-H-O-L-E-S, that's gonna be the answer to uh, X, because X is how many holes can be split into four equal pieces such that each piece is worth three halves. Well, let's add them up. 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 halves. So there's six holes. Okay. There's a hole. Let's use multiple colors here. Two, three. Four, five, six. Six holes. So the answer is six. Okay. Now you probably already knew the answer, but the deal here is I'm showing you how you can break down a proportion and actually understand what's happening here. So, once again, this says six when split into four pieces, 
means that each one of those four pieces is worth three halves. Bam. Okay, let's take a second. Let's soak in that. Of course, if it works and you understand this simple example, you can definitely do it with much more complicated things. Okay. Hey, that's great, Mr. Witcher, but what if X is on the bottom? Okay. I like to encourage you in class and in the real world to, uh, whenever you have a question like what if, to go ahead and do it and then answer the question for yourself. Of course, always be safe. And in this case, I'm just talking about stuff in math class, not weird stuff like you see on YouTube. Well, of course, my videos are great, so that's safe. So let's say you have this problem. Hey, didn't you? That looks a lot like the one you just did, Mr. Witcher. I know, I know, but let's keep a secret, okay? So right now we have X's on the bottom. Well, let's use the same model we had the first time. So let's just make a uh, rectangle model. Generic rectangle, right? The measurements don't matter. This thing, we're going to call it 4, right? Because we have 4 split into we don't know how many pieces. X number of pieces means we don't know how many pieces. We don't know. 4 is split into some unknown number of pieces. But we do know that each piece is worth two-thirds. So if we could just figure out how many two-thirds fit into four, that would tell us how many equal pieces there are in four, such that each piece is worth two-thirds. Hey, is this kind of sounding like that first problem just a little bit? Hmm. Let's check it out. So here we go. We got this thing called four. And what we're going to do is we're going to mark the holes. This thing is called 4. Well, before we can have 2 thirds of something, we need to know what the hole is, right? If this is 4, then this thing is the hole, right? So, how many of these two-thirds will fill this? Well, if we split the whole thing into threes, there's a two-thirds, right? So, how many two-thirds make four? Well, there's one. There's two, there's three, there's four, five, six. So the answer is six. Let's go back and really try to understand the question here. So this is saying, I have this unknown, this thing that we know, 4, whatever. We're just going to call that rectangle 4. We split it into we don't know how many pieces, but one thing we do know is each one of those pieces equals two-thirds of a whole. So we took the 4, a known quantity, and we split it into holes. because we know that there are four holes in four, right? So we split it in four. And then we just counted how many two-thirds of a hole are there in here. And that tells us how many pieces four was split into. One, two, three, four, five, six. If four is split into six pieces, each piece is worth two-thirds. Ah, <sighs> okay.
of course, this only interests you if you're interested in learning something and not just doing an algorithm. So let's relate this to doing an algorithm, which might be your previous experience. A lot of you know how to cross multiply. So if we take our same original problem, which was x over 4 equals 3 halves, if we cross multiply, here's what happens. We get 2 times x on one side, 3 times 4 on the other side. So that makes 2x equals 12. Then we divide both sides by 2 to get x equals 6. That's your traditional method. But that's just a rote algorithm, which means you're like a little robot, and you know how to get the answer, but you don't really know what it means. Okay? This example here with the rectangle model shows that you do know what it means. You understand what's happening, not just what the answer is. Okay, Knowing what's happening is more useful in the real world. Now, another thing to keep in mind here, what if we take our second problem, right? The second one looked like this. Remember the X was on the bottom? I hope you noticed something about that. I kind of mentioned it while we were doing it. This is just simply the first problem with both things flipped upside down. Let's do our proof here, though. 2 times x on one side, 4 times 3 on the other. And you can tell that we're going to end up with the same answer, right? Just like we did in my demonstration. Ooh, what does this mean? It means x is never on the bottom. x is never on the bottom. Here's what I mean. If you got some problem like this, 6 over x equals 4 sevenths, and you can only remember how to do it this way, easy. Flip them both. Flip them both. Bam. Bam. X over 6 equals 7 fourths. Then you make your rectangle model and you say, you say you have this thing X. It's split into six pieces. Each piece each one of those six pieces is worth seven-fourths. And what's the answer? Well, it's uh, 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42 fourths, or 14. Hey, and that, my friends, faithful viewers, that's how you do it. That's how you can use a rectangle model to solve a proportion. Thank you, and good night.